So, 2018 was interesting. I think that's the right word to use here. Let's be honest, unless you were the greatest showman, hip-hop, or Ariana Grande, you were basically... You're basically a garbage person. Just look at the charts this year. Billboard was a mess. The UK chart was alright at times. But if you look through the dirt, we've had some great albums this year. So, get ready, these are the top 10 best albums of 2018. Number 10. Villains by Emma Blackery. Emma Blackery is a British YouTuber musician. Villains is her first full-length debut album following the release of 5 EPs over the past 6 years. Magnetized, her last EP, charted on the UK album charts at number 63 and even went into the top 10 on the iTunes chart. The main appeal to Villains is that Emma's changed her roots to pop and she's definitely accomplished the transition. Songs like Third Eye and Burn the Witch are the clear highlights from this album. So you twist, insist, and turn it around and number 9, Shawn Mendes by Charlie Poof. Just kidding, Shawn Mendes. This was Shawn Mendes' third number one album before the age of 20. Until just recently, I realized Shawn is a guilty pleasure. I mean, I feel no shame to listen to his music, but it was only this year I realized just how much I actually liked his music. The one thing I admire about Sean and this album is that it doesn't have the big level production. In My Blood and Nervous only use guitars to build up the track, and that's enough. He uses the instrument in many ways to benefit his voice and the track. Granted, In My Blood is not really acoustic, it's more rockish. But it still doesn't have the auto-tune and whininess that pop music has these days. Number 8, Camila by Camila Cabello. To say the debut of Camila Cabello is a success is a major understatement. Havana's become one of the biggest played songs of all time with over a billion streams on Spotify and her debut album went number one in platinum. To be perfectly honest, I had quite low expectations for this album because I was never a big fan of Fifth Harmony. They had some alright songs but nothing that blew me away. But I was surprised I would like this album a lot more than I thought I would. The best song by a long shot is Something's Gotta Give. It's just something special. Instantly when I heard it, it's moody, dark. I still think it would be great for like a soundtrack for something like Batman or something. It's really dramatic. Something's gotta give. Something's gotta break. Number 7, Kamikaze by Eminem. A controversial choice here, considering how people split on Eminem lately. His last album, Revival, was panned by everyone. It wasn't terrible though, it had some good songs like Need Me featuring Pink and River featuring Ed Sheeran. But this album was leaps and bounds ahead of that album. Fall is my favourite, if not only for the line. I can take all of you motherfuckers on it once you want it shady, you got it. Got it. Number 6, I Met You When I Was 18, the playlist by... Love? Love? This dude. So just because I can't say his name, does not mean I can't appreciate the music. He's probably one of the most intriguing acts of this year, because he's done something very well that not a lot of people have managed to do, which is electro dance music. It has this really good vibe on album cuts such as Adrenaline, Bracelet, He's released some great singles from the album, such as Getting Over You and Easy Love, and also the smash hit, I Like Me Better. This debut album's really good, and people need to give it a listen. It is great. Number 5, Expectations by BB Rexa. I've been listening to BB Rexa since her debut song with Cash Cash, Take Me Home, came out in 2013. She's released three brilliant EPs before this album, including the All Your Fault series, which have garnered over 1.2 billion 
to dreams combined on Spotify alone. Expectations to me is more of a collection of songs that showcase what BB can do. You have the more R&B hip hop vibes of Two Songs on Fire and Steady, the big pop songs like Self Control and I'm a Mess, but most importantly that she's an amazing and underrated vocalist and songwriter with songs like Pillow and Grace. You can't deny that this woman can write unbelievably catchy and amazing songs, having wrote The Monster by Eminem, Team by Iggy Azalea, and has done other songs with Selena Gomez and Nick Jonas. Number 4, Voice Notes by Charlie Puth. I was super excited to hear this album and was super pissed when it got delayed because just from attention how long, I was sold and was just waiting to see what else Charlie Puth had to offer. This 90s inspired record has so many great songs and some great influences from artists from the likes of Justin Timberlake on songs like Ellie Girls. Arguably one of the best songs off the album is the Boyz II Men collaboration, If You Leave Me Now. It's perfectly crafted, with the harmonies between Puth and Boyz II Men being the main instrumental and the main music for the track. I think it's smart, and I think it's really beautiful. Cause girl, if you leave me now. Number three, narrated for you by... Alec Benjamin. This mixtape was only just released, but I've ranked it this high because I find him to be in the same league as Sean Mendes. Although Sean has more power to his voice, I feel like they can fit into the same genre because they use minimalistic productions in their songs, and the guitar is the main feature in a lot of their songs. But I find Alec Benjamin's storytelling more convincing and compelling, especially in songs like Boy in the Bubble and If We Have Each Other. The best song of the album, and one of my favourite songs of this year, is Let Me Down Slowly, and also If I Killed Someone For You. If you wanna go, then I'll be so lonely. If you leave him, baby, let me down slowly. Number 2, Staying At Tomorrow's by George Ezra. The difficult thing about this album is, I don't know why I like it so much. The songs on it are so catchy, he has such a good voice, and he doesn't have to belt out. It's almost reggae, in a way, because the music is so relaxed. Songs like Shotgun, Don't Matter Now, and Sugarcoat are so smooth in the progression of how they flow. The good thing about the album is that it's comfort listening. His songs aren't moody, mellow, and depressing, which is a great trend in pop music today. And he doesn't talk about drinking and drugs and going out partying, but he talks about life, which is something everyone needs these days. I'll be riding shotgun underneath the hot sun, feeling like someone. Now for some honorable mentions. Singular Act 1 by Sabrina Carpenter. This is only just missed out on the top 10 because I felt Emma's album had more depth to it, but this album is still amazing and worth a listen. Hold Tight and Sue Me are the best songs on this album. Beer Bongs and Bentleys by Post Malone. Until Eminem released Kamikaze, this was the only hip hop album I enjoyed. I loved Rockstar and Candy Pain. Number one, Man of the Woods by Justin Timberlake. People really overlooked this album. Why? Because lately I think it's become a trend to hate Justin Timberlake. People have hated his Super Bowl performance because it wasn't as good as Lady Gaga. Firstly, yeah, it wasn't as good as Gaga, but it was still a great performance. He performed hits that travelled 16 years, and he isn't a theatrical performer like Lady Gaga, so I think people expected too much, but I still enjoyed the performance 
and this album. I'm not going to say I've been a Justin Timberlake fan since before I was born, because I wasn't. I became a fan of him when he returned to music in 2013 with the 2020 experience. I found his music to be different and have some actual personality to it, and Mirrors and Suit and Tie were bangers. Filthy has the best opening to a song ever. I can't remember a song that has such a great intro. So powerful with the electric guitars and the way it builds up to get to the first verse. The one thing Justin can do so good is build up anticipation and he isn't afraid to change it up a bit and he did that with this album. This album definitely embraces his roots with the country twang in some of the songs like Midnight Summer Jam, Montana and Flannel. He sticks to some RME roots in songs like Supply, Filthy and Source. The reason why this album sticks out as the best album of 2018 is because it sounds nothing like the current trends or anything I've listed. It has the perfect balance of fun, funk and personality. Which is why this ranks at the top of the list of the best albums of 2018.